In the present crisis, one of your most recent books, you say that Darwin is dead. Just where did Darwin go wrong? The explanation for the origin of life on the earth in the case of Darwinism is that it was the combination of certain elements more or less accidentally which created the first primary forms of life. In the case of the creationists, the position is that God created man in his own image. From my point of view, both the explanations are incorrect. The Darwinian hypothesis is weak because it could not be possible for an accidental product to attain to such remarkable variations and complexity during the course of the millions of years that have elapsed since life first appeared on the earth. It is not possible to believe that time after time an accidental mutation took place to bring about all the variety of life on the earth. It would be stretching chance too far. The odds against such a series of chance events taking place would be almost infinite. It is hard to believe that man could all of a sudden make appearance as if it had descended from the sky and start working on the earth as an intelligent human being. The record of fossils does not support this point of view. We see man as a half-cultured being, before that as a savage, and before that in almost subhuman forms in different parts of the earth. So there must have been some sort of a growth, some sort of an evolution. From the time we are able to find signs of the first man to this day, there must have been a process of gradual development during all this period. Secondly, it is also before our eyes that in the case of the human child, it has to pass certain stages from the day of conception to the time it is born from the womb of the mother. It passes through different stages, like say a fish, a tadpole, a reptile, a quadruped, and then a man. The child stands at the last stage and also is able to talk, which it is not possible for it to do during the first couple of years. There we see nature repeating the process by which man appeared on the earth. But what we see, what the evolutionists ignore, is that the human seed is already oriented for these later manifestations. That, like the seed of a tree, it contains the future man within it. A fertilized human oven would only produce a human child, not any other form of life or a lower animal or reptile or a fish. From this it is easy to infer that in the same way life must have started on the earth as a primordial seed which by subsequent steps reached 
to the stature of man or was built up in the various forms of life we meet on the earth. In other words, evolution is planned and not random as is held by the evolutionists. From my point of view, the reason for this attitude has been antagonism towards the concept of religion. It has been a sort of battle between those who believe in religion and those who inherently are opposed to it. Most of the evolutionists array their arguments in such a way as if evolution stands proved. It does not. There are still many gaps which have not been filled up so far. For instance, there is no explanation how the intellect developed in human beings. Darwin explains it by saying that it was due to accident or random mutation as in the other cases, but no detailed explanation for the fact is forthcoming either from him or any other evolutionist so far. Similarly, there is no explanation how the eye was formed, how there is such a complex organ as the organ of our sight. There are other facts which have not been explained so far and as we see day by day a greater opposition to the theory is mounting up from other biologists and scientists. At the present moment, the Darwinian hypothesis does not hold such a sway as it did maybe 50 years ago. I do not see any reason why we should not ascribe the phenomenon of life to the operation of an energy which is entirely dissimilar to the material energies with which we are surrounded everywhere. Our senses, all the five of them, can perceive only a very tiny fragment of the universe. 